the center of the world, a prayer of St. G. An autumn sun shines warmly upon the pond, the marsh surrounding. It is the center of the world, as is each place the center of its own life. But we are not meant to be the center of the world, nor of our own life. If there is anything central to the idea of the world, it is your church. Before anything was, there was in your mind the idea of the multifaceted community of the people of God. Adam was first given patriarchy of his family upon the earth. For centuries unto Abraham, it was dormant, then given to his seed to carry it as in the womb. What was to be was hidden in the soil of Israel, even in its travels upon alien soils. They carried the promise given to Eve that her seed, a single seed, would come into the world to defeat the works of the devil, who rose up in the world and placed upon us his dominion. In the continual failure of Israel, which in all things went its own way, the coming one was given only to be raised among them in the treasure of their scriptures. Thereafter, the apostles were given very special illumination to lead the church to its destiny. Among them was active the Holy Spirit from the time of Pentecost. Here it became the church for the world. Its formation was in the eternal divine decree of the triune God. Then one to the world by Je the blood of Jesus, the Son of God, whereupon the kingdom of Christ came into the world, replacing the dominion of Satan of this world. In his human nature, Jesus had a profound sense of the infinite distance between God and his creatures, so that Jesus spoke of God as being in heaven, the most exalted conception of his being and character. Thus we look always upward to the place where you reveal your glory and perfection, and surely it will be a place for new heavens and a new earth are promised. But the kingdom of God will always be you, the person of God. Were New Jerusalem the city of God not built, we would yet be in the paradise of your presence. And men were born to work among men. We are here, your hands and feet. Also we hold a commission to teach the gospel to all nations. You desire our participation in your work and in your plan. What if a man withdraws from the world? What then? Perhaps he tried to be hands and feet and to speak the word, but no one listened. The church is set upon following Jesus. What would Jesus do? And as the work of Jesus is foreshadowed by the preparatory work in the patriarchs and prophets of Israel, so we follow upon the incarnation cross and resurrection and upon the early life and writings of the church. Our knowledge is conditioned by the historical development of the human race and the forces at work in the sun, moon, and stars, the elemental motions of physics, also at work upon the earth, the actions of spirits, be they angels or demons from another sphere. So that all this is somewhat within our grasp, but beyond this is what? The earth is a very small center. The work of the Holy Spirit must touch the entire host of heaven and earth. The Holy Spirit is God, therefore sovereign. Hence, he cannot depend upon these influences, but completely controls them. His work must be honored in all the host of heaven, in man and in our history, in the preparation of scripture, in the incarnation of the word, in the salvation of the elect. Then comes the consummation of all which went before, the catastrophe whereby all that is shall receive its due. How shall we use our minds? Can there be any worthier object of mental application than you, eternal God? The word illumines the mysteries of your being. We wish to receive the deep things of God. We seek our comfort, mostly from the Father or the Son, unable to say why and what in what sense the Holy Spirit is especially called our comforter. It is he perfects the work 
process, processing forth from, proceeding forth from the Father, and the power to arrange from the Son. The Father generates the Son, and the Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son. The Son upholds all things by the word of his power. The Son ascended to heaven. The Spirit remained. Of him all things consist. But he is not pantheistically all things, yet he does dwell within each person of the family of God. Your outgoing works we have seen, your indwelling works from everlasting to everlasting are what we wish to know. These are the activities of your being. Some operations of the divine being are destined to be revealed in time. Others will remain forever unrevealed. Your indwelling work in us is individual, but its result is communal. We will be one body of Christ, or even now, but is it not so evident? If we wish to remove ourselves from the center of our whole historical life, we shall seek our comfort in you, the wonderful Counselor, the Prince of Peace. Amen.